Hey everyone, it's Margot of The Bigs Go African and this is vlog number 11. So yes, I have moved position. I, how do you video yourself with enough lighting for your face without having glare on your glasses? It just, this is not gonna work here either. I don't know, maybe it's because I don't have professional equipment. Anyway, I'll just have to not see properly. So, yes, it's been a while. I know I say that at the beginning of every blog, vlog, and that's because I'm just a little bit slack. Having said that, I haven't had that much exciting to say over the last couple of months. We've done a lot of travel, we've been in Australia for a while. Um, there hasn't been a lot of great excitement. So, We, now see, I, right, never mind. We let, oops, bumped the tripod. That's got to be a no-no. Anyway, we left Liberia in July last year. And um, as many of you know, we did get stuck in the UK. We got stranded there. So our flights got cancelled um, to Australia. And that's because of the flight caps that the Australian government has put in place. I think really the reason is because you, anyone coming into Australia has to do a forced two week hotel quarantine. And um, so of course that limits the places. So I have a lot of feelings about these flight caps and I am going to try not to get too political. I think there has been a lot of meanness and nastiness and hate in the world over the last 12 months um, with people that have different opinions. I am not saying my opinions are right. And I think we need to be nicer to each other. We've So, so we got stranded in the UK because um, we couldn't get on a flight home. I I can say from personal experience that that was really rough. It was scary. I just didn't know how long it was going to be. Um, I felt like my passport was had no value whatsoever, useless. I felt really rejected and abandoned by my own government and by a lot of the Australian people who um, were very, very judgmental to those of us who were overseas. I mean, you know, there was a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of nastiness. Oh, you should have come back sooner. Well, you know, we own, we each have our own story to tell. And there are thousands and thousands of Australians stranded overseas and all of their stories are quite appropriate and make sense. Yet um, we've been heavily judged by many people. I understand that we are in a pandemic and we should not be blasé and we need to treat it seriously. However, I don't think that we should be excluding citizens from our own country. And I think I don't have all the answers, but I feel like there's got to be a better way. I um, had a lot of tears. I did end up getting some counselling. And, you know, before this vlog, I thought, you can't tell people you're getting counselling. And then I thought, well, why not? I made an equipment, I made a commitment to be authentic and honest. And that's just who I am. I was angry. I was depressed. I was crying every day. So I went and talked to someone about it. And it was the best thing. I felt a lot better after that. So I don't have any shame over that. I think it was a good idea. So anyway, we got back to Australia in September. Stephen did his instructor rating, um, which worked out well. So, um, so we left Liberia and came back to Australia because Stephen couldn't fly there because he has to get his license renewed every six months in Uganda and we couldn't get into Uganda because of COVID. So we went back to Australia and he used that time wisely um, to do his instructor rating, which at some point he would need to do within the next few years to keep advancing the program in West Africa. So I also did some work there in a Western hospital, which was really nice. I thought I was there for a lot longer than I had originally planned to be. And I thought, well, it would be good to keep my Western hospital skills up, earn some money, which I can take back to Liberia for the projects I'm doing there. 
And it was actually really lovely to do that work. I really enjoyed it immensely. Um, but it in, in some ways actually did make it harder having to come back. And here's another thing that I thought, oh, should I tell people this? But hey, if I'm nothing else, I'm honest. There were days when I thought, I don't want to go back because it was so nice being in Australian hospital again. And I think I worked out that the like people would say to me, um, you must be loving, you know, having plenty of resources and the equipment and just the cleanliness. And I did, I loved all those things, but I worked out that, and I didn't realize this until it happened, that the thing that I loved most was working with people in my own culture that I could understand. And I can walk down the hall of the hospital and just feel like I know what I'm doing. I know how to behave. I know what to say. I understand people. I can talk with them. I can laugh. I can join in the jokes. I can join in the conversation. And I loved that feeling like I fit in. I felt comfortable. And it made me some days feel like, God, I don't want to go back to Liberia. And I know that that is normal to think that. Sometimes we do things in life that don't always feel good at the time. And I did find though, it was easy to work through those moments because all I have to do is remind myself of the impact that I'm having there. And the fact that although the challenges some days can seem overwhelming, the fulfillment in what I'm doing is, is immense. And how could I possibly not obey when he calls me to do something. It doesn't matter if it's hard. I only have one life to live. I would hate to get to heaven and say, oh no, I could have done more. That's my worst nightmare. So those little moments where I have those little tantrum, I don't want to do it. They're quite easy to process really when I remember why I'm doing what I'm doing. And, and it is very fulfilling. The language, yeah, it, it's been one of my biggest stresses, Liberian English. You can't get formal lessons in it. Um, I'm very grateful to some friends I have there. Shout out to Annette and Rachel, my Liberian friends who I can understand, and they help me so much. And I'm told that the more I immerse myself in it, I'll just pick it up. And I guess I have improved. I'm just so impatient. Yeah, I'm impatient. But anyway, you know, it's a journey and I'm on it and I'll just keep on taking one step at a time. So we're back in Uganda now. Stephen's finishing off um, the things that he had to do here and now we're just waiting on the Ugandan Civil Aviation Authority to um, issue his license and then we can head back to Liberia. I mean, it could be only a few days it could be a lot longer than that if the Ugandan CAA takes their time. So we're just praying it will be quick because I have found it really hard being out of Liberia for so long because, um, you know, the longer I'm out, then the harder it is to retransition when I go back in again. So as much as I love going back home to Australia and seeing my family and friends, um, it's if it's if it's too long, it's it's harder to retransition again. So. I'm really keen to get back and get that process started again. And I'm really looking forward to a good year. I know that 2020, well, it's been a very rough year for us. And I mean, hello, it's been a rough year for everyone. I know that. And you guys, you know, we got through 2020. 2021, yeah, I know, we still have issues. It's not all over. But I think, well, I hope by the end of this year, things are gonna be looking a lot better. Um, hang in there, guys. There's always joy. There's always joy to be had. And I, I get joy in Jesus, in my faith. I just feel his presence in my life. I know that I'm never alone. Yeah, I have down moments and I have my tantrums, but I get through them. There's always joy to be found. So there's my little pep talk. I didn't mean it to be a pep talk. It just happened. I don't know if you can hear the dog barking. He barks at the monkeys playing in the trees. It, there's noisy birds here too. It's actually quite hard to find a quiet moment. Anyway, I had hoped this would be a quicker vlog, so I'm gonna 
sign off there. Love you guys. Hang in there. Keep in touch. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.